but you desire to see to get healed overcame the fear of being exposed. And sometimes we get caught in the fear of being exposed when we really need to just come to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment and let him do the healing that, that needs to take place in my heart. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at GodSpeakMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodSpeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. I forgive all because you were forsaken. Think about the words. And I'm accepted. You were condemned. Here you go. And I'm alive and well your spirit is within me why because you died and rose again thank you jesus amazing love how can it be that you my king die for me amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you sing with me. You are my 
above us. He's right here. He can see every one of us. Knows every hair on your head. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Well, I'm Mike Emhoff, and uh, we, we uh, Chick and I serve with Godspeed and, and Righteous for Christ. So, sometimes we have different color shirts on, but we serve the same God. Amen. And as you know, a lot of racers cross over to both directions in PDRA, and it just doesn't matter. And uh, I go to a little church out in the country. We have about 60 people. And I'll just tell you a little short story before we get, I get started with this. Every summer, uh, a team from our church goes to New York City because we're connected with a homeless ministry out there. And they feed the poor, the homeless. That's what this, this ministry is all about. And this year, two years ago, our past, senior pastor retired. He's, he's younger than I am, but he retired. Uh, and anyway, he has been working with Amish youth He's had about 25 young Amish men coming to a Bible study. Now, we think of Amish as Christian, but I remember the, one of the, it was right before Easter, the first year in met with him, and he asked them if they knew what Easter was, and they said, yeah, that was when Jesus was born. That shows you what little they really know about the gospel of Christ. Well, this year, He's taking three of those young men to New York City to help feed the homeless. And you wouldn't know by looking at them, they're Amish because they have blue jeans on and they're just dressed like regular folks. And I said, what an adventure that's going to be for them. And I talked to him a little bit about how we know to hear from God. You know, sometimes it's a word and, and how many have been there where you know, you just keep getting that thought, I need to call so-and-so. I need to call so-and-so. That's how God works. You know, that's the prophetic voice of God speaking to you. You know, people have made it into some wooey thing. But God is so simple when he deals with us. He'll give us a word or a feeling. But when we act on that, his spirit flows through it and accomplishes his purposes. So I'm going to encourage you just... Be more sensitive to the Spirit of God in the coming days because we're in days of grace. And that's the that's title of my message. And I want to start off by reading John 8, verse 1. John 8, verse 1. At dawn he went to the temple complex again and all the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery and made her stand in the center. Teacher, they said to him, this woman was caught in the act of committing adultery. And Moses' law commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say, they asked him. They asked him just to trap him in order that they might have evidence against him. You know, isn't it interesting, they brought the woman, but they didn't bring the man. It's kind of disgusting, isn't it? It's a, it's a double standard type deal that still goes on today. But what did Jesus do? He said he just stooped down on the ground and he started writing on the ground with his finger. And when they persisted in questioning him, he stood up and said to them, the one without sin among you should be the first to throw a stone at him. Then he stooped down again and continued riding on the ground. And when they heard this, they left one by one, starting with the older men. And only he was left with the woman in the center. And when Jesus stood up, he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, Lord, she answered. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. 
Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. Here's a woman that, that under the law, should have been stoned. But Jesus, in his grace and mercy, said, just go and sin no more. You know, here she is, standing in the midst, thinking she's going to be stoned. Had to be one, had to be the most embarrassing moment of her life to be brought before the religious leaders. And Jesus applies mercy. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. How many of us deal with judgment as a sin in our lives instead of applying mercy when we see somebody doing what they shouldn't do? It's the first thing that comes to mind. The first thing that comes to my mind, we just jump to judging that person. God forgive us. Because Jesus says mercy, mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy is what drew you and I to Christ. Grace. When we learn the grace that God has for us, we knew we were sinners. Nobody had to tell me I was a sinner. Nobody had to tell me I was separated from God. I knew it. I just didn't know how to get right with it. Until somebody explained the simple way that Jesus died for me. And I was ready to listen. Jesus opened a season of grace when he forgave that woman. It's a season of grace. And we fail to live in that grace. We fail to extend that grace to those around us. We want grace from God, don't we? We have to be willing to extend that grace to those around us, to those who sin against us, to those who hurt us. If we want to be set free, we have to offer that same grace. It's a two-way street. As I said, it's a season of grace. The season of grace, you know, most of us could quote John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He came to say to forgive. But the verse following that says Jesus didn't come to condemn, but to save. He came to forgive, not condemn. And how quick we are to condemn and not offer that grace. You know, the, I, the word I have for you today that we are in a season of grace, and I speak that season of grace over you, that grace will open the door for the things that have been going on in your life. Maybe it's a habitual sin that, that nobody but you know about. But this is a season of grace that God is saying, I'll forgive that if you'll bring it to me and leave it there. Because he wants to forgive. He doesn't want to condemn. He wants to forgive. It could be broken family relationships. The grace season extends over so many areas if we will just apply them. There's grace to restore broken relationships in families. You know, I know families that haven't talked to one another in, in 10 years. And I hate to hear that because they're family. Whatever caused that to happen? Well, I'm saying to you today, if there's something going on in your family, there's grace to heal that. There's grace to heal that. Now, along with the grace, you have to apply your faith and believe, yes, that message is for me. It's just like when I heard the message of salvation, I had to say, that's for me. I want that. It's the same way with this season of grace I believe we're in. You have to say, I want that. I want that grace in my life. And then we have to apply faith. The same thing we applied when we accepted Christ. Our faith has to reach out and say, I want that, and I'm going to act on it. Now, if you're in a situation that the family is broken, you may have to reach out to that family member and say, I'm sorry. Take a step, take a risk. And they may not respond, but the important thing is that you did your part. You stepped out 
in faith, and you held out mercy instead of judgment. And any of us who have families have judgment things going on in the background. Let's be real. You don't know my family. <laughs> We're all the same here. We all have some issues to deal with. You know, we have to be like that woman with the issue of blood. You know, talk about an embarrassing thing. Here is an unclean woman when she came to Jesus, and she knew, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. We'll talk about being embarrassed to come into a, a crowd of people like that, knowing you were unclean. But she desired to seek to get healed, overcame the fear of being exposed. And sometimes we get caught in the fear of being exposed when we really need to just come to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment and let him do the healing that, that needs to take place in my heart. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said it was just a cakewalk through a Christian life. Because stuff comes up all along that we get to have to deal with. And the question is, how do we deal with it? Do we deal with it in grace or do we deal with it in judgment? So many times we deal with it in judgment, but we can repent and say, God, forgive me. I'll do that over. Because how many of you know, you go around the mountain once and if you didn't get the right result, you go around the mountain again. Or am I the only one? <laughs> I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. But God is merciful. Jesus is merciful. He's calling for us to be merciful and gracious and kind and loving because that's what the world needs. Just look on the news and see what's lacking. It's mercy, grace, and love. And we're called to be instruments of that army of mercy and grace and love. And there's going to be arrows getting shot at you and some come from the back because some Christians won't like you offering mercy and kindness and love because they're too busy judging. Been there. You know, I mean, I've been there. I confess that as a sin. You know, become a person of grace. Live out your faith the way Jesus would want you. You know, uh, I asked the chaplains if they would come as we get ready to close. I'd like to pray for a couple things. You know, this school shooting in Texas is, is just horrific. And, you know, my first mind in my mind is to judge the shooter and what went on. Secondly, I judge the police department for not rushing in and saving those kids when they were there for an hour before they went in. And I have to back up and say, God, be merciful to them because they're dealing with this the rest of their lives. And what about the one police officer that went in and said, if you need help, say help. And the, the gunman heard her say that and went over and shot him. Think what he's dealing with. He'll live without the rest of his life. We've got to start moving in mercy and love compassion and living that out and I asked some of the chaplains to come and pray over that and the other thing I'd like if, if there's something you're dealing with in your life that you'd like prayer that you need to see grace applied to we're here for that and we'd like to pray with you to just agree with you for that situation and that's all I got to say about that let us pray Father God, I come to you today, and I'm grateful for second chances, Father. You tell me, your word says, someone had asked, do I forgive seven times? He says, no, 77 times you forgive. He's a God of second chances. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity of grace. We thank you for the opportunity to come out in public and worship you, Father. Father, we're in uncertain times, but they're not uncertain for you, Father. You know what's going on the Alpha and the Omega. So Father, I raise up the hearts that are here. And Father, I pray that you purge them 
and let them know that prayer is not the end. It's not something you do the 14th time, 14th time down the road. It's the first thing we do, Father. Come to you boldly to the throne. We can do that. Let us not forget that. And Father, I speak grace as well over every person here. To help us to not be judgmental, but to be loving. Bless this day, Father, with grace and mercy. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's, let's continue the spirit of prayer. Father, today we come seeking you because you are more than enough. You are more than all we need. And Father, we have many today who are in great need, especially the, the people of Texas, that small school where 18 students, two teachers, 19 students, two teachers, and the government, and his grandmother, plus the 17 that are injured, Father, and dealing with that. Father, there is more than just injury. There is that lack of hope and that senselessness that we cannot, cannot comprehend. And we live in a fallen world. You did not do this, Father. You did not cause this, but you are the source of our hope, our help. And Father, I know that there are people here in these stands whose children have suffered injury and there are parents here who have lost loved ones they have lost those children and they know and can agonize with the parents and the community in Texas but today Father we have come not to view the tragedy and dwell over the hopelessness of it although we do we do but Father, we turn to you because you are our healer. You are our savior. You are our restorer. You are the one who brings us to the place of restoration. Which no one else can do. We will not find it on the psychiatrist's couch. We will not find it in a bottle. We will not find it in drugs. We will find it in your word and in your presence, Father. And that is where we come today, not only to bring ourselves, Father, but to bring all of these with us into the mighty throne room of the King of the universe whose decisions and decrees are being made, decided, and decreed over us this day that, yes, we shall live. We have a purpose. We have a cause in this world and in this life. And Father, let us never forget, even though we mourn and then we cry, Father, let us not forget that we have yet a mission. We are still here to love, to show mercy. And Father, as Mike spoke this morning, I just thought, Father, if only, if only this small, this group, this great group here today, Father, would carry your mercy and demonstrate your love into this community and back home in our towns and our cities and states. We could become the fire that changes this world, Father. Let it be so. Let us be the power. Let your Holy Spirit be the power within us, Father, that brings resurrection and hope to a world who is dying. Father, we pray for everyone here that that spirit of rejection, I command you to leave right now. I feel that so much as people are dealing with that. And Father, I just commit love over them. Bathe them in your love, Father. Let them lay down when they stand up today. Let everything not of you stay in the seats and be swept away by the winds of time. Through the name and the power of Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people shouted, Amen. 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 We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212.
or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.